These five chefs all want to become the next professional MasterChef champion. Today, they face their first challenge. Three tests set by chef Monica Galetti, seasoned diner Greg Wallace, and two Michelin-starred British chef Marcus Waring. I'm highly competitive as a person. I like to beat people. I want to do better than the next person. I'm a person who likes to take risks. I do get a buzz off of being outside of my comfort zone. This is serious stuff, and I really, really want to push as hard as I can to go as far as I can. Only the best will make it through to the quarter-final. There's got to be something in each one of these chefs that proves they deserve to be here. What we're looking for is the real pro in there. Welcome to Professional MasterChef. First test, your signature dish. You realise, don't you, what a difficult job it's going to be to impress the chefs standing here in front of you? Signature dish. Sometimes it's the Achilles heel of a chef. Never know when to say stop. Looking for good skill, great execution, your working methods, your cleaning methods, in fact, I'm going to be looking at everything. What a great way to show us what you're made of. I wish you the best of luck. One hour, off you go. I work basically in a, a lovely gastro pub in Dorset and I'm the chef de party. For many years I worked on yachts, cooking for A-list celebs, some of the most famous people in the world. But after a long period of time I decided to come back to my roots and work uh, where I grew up. Samantha, why are you here? Um, hopefully to win. <laughs> you look very nervous. Yeah. <laughs> it's seeing I, you guys for I... the first time. It's just. <laughs> well, we're here. <laughs> You're here. He's hungry. <laughs> so tell me, what's the title of your dish? I'm doing a cannon of lamb with wilted cross. Uh, I've got some fresh peas, goat's curd, and a little dressing. It's kind of a springtime dish as such. I love the sound of the dish. And I'm loving what I'm seeing on your bench. Looks good. Do you think, Greg? I do, yeah. Actually, I, I really do. Thank you. Samantha, cannon of lamb. I think there's a curd to go on there as well. It's a fresh spring kind of dish. The lamb. She's going to poach it for a while, and then she's going to pan fry it. You're taking all the fat off, you're taking the bones away. You could have a real issue there. And if she's not feeling so confident, very quickly that can be overcooked. You've had ten minutes. Ten minutes has gone. I'm currently working in a five-star hotel in central London. I'm the junior suit, and I've been working up the ladder for about nine years now. My family weren't too happy when I chose to be a chef. They said they'd much rather me work in a bank and earn lots of money. Uh, so I did for a very short time. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't like it and I left and I started in catering college. Daniel, are you a pastry chef? I am a pastry chef at heart, yes. What do you mean at heart? I don't do it anymore at the minute. I'm, uh, I'm currently working all the way around the kitchen, but pastry's where my heart lies. And what are you cooking? It's not a lemon meringue pie, but it's the flavours of lemon meringue pie. What makes this different? What makes it cutting edge? What's going to mm. stand out from everyone else? It's the pure flavour. So they're getting that balance of the sweet, the sweet and, the and the sour. sour. Yeah. It's crucial. Very crucial. And what do you think it takes to impress a Marcus? Perfection. You got that bit right. <laughs> Mate, go for it. Pastry, it's nice to see. I love lemon meringue pie. That sweet and that sour, 
Oh, it's just a great combination. The meringue, it's got to be soft and glazed to a nice golden meringue on the top. If it's good, I'm going to be a happy chef today. I'm 21 years old and I spent two and a half years working in France. There was a lot of French influence, obviously, and also a lot of um, Japanese influence in the food. I came back to England and I'm now running a micro bakery from home. I love making my bread every day, but I do miss the kitchen, I miss the band, so I miss service. I would say it is a bit of a crossroads at the moment. It's now the point in my life where I need to decide what I'm going to do. Zach. Hello. What are you making for us? I am making oven roasted sea bream with a nori seaweed and katsubushi polenta and a green tea butter sauce. What, what's in the polenta? Katsubushi. What's, what's katsubushi? Katsubushi is a type of um, dried Japanese fish. So, Asian flavours is the route you're taking today? Asian flavours. Do you know uh, these ingredients, if you're quite comfortable using them? Yes. Um, so, this is going to be something absolutely amazing I'm expecting from I you. I hope so. Yeah? yeah? Zach, you're fascinating. Thank you. I hope your food is. Let's hope so. Zach is cooking sea bream with seaweed in his polenta with a matcha green tea butter sauce. I love bream, but it worries me when young people start talking like that. Sometimes they can try too high, too far, too soon. Whether it all comes together is what I'm really curious to try. He's just backpacked a cabbage. Yeah, I'm really intrigued. You are halfway. You've had 30 minutes, you got 30 minutes. I work in a restaurant just off Piccadilly Circus. It's a very classic French restaurant. My role is sous chef. The kitchen, what we got, uh, I think it's the biggest kitchen I ever worked in. We do 1,200 covers a day. I love cooking. It's my passion, it's my ambition. Basically, it's everything for me. Service. Joggy, you seem to be working at a furious pace. Yeah, I think I just want to finish it on time. It's a crispy aromatic duck breast served with tempered cabbage, crust red liver, and a duck jus. Can you define your cooking? Um, a fusion of Indian, British, French, and other parts of <laughs> Asia and world. You're putting all this on one plate, though? Absolutely, Chef. My goodness me. So You're it's... scaring me now. I think you'll be safe. Wow, is all I can say. Good luck with this, mate. Thank you. Cheers. Joggy has, has got a lot going on and, and seems to have a lot of different techniques. I love the cooking on the bone. It's nice to see a little bit of classic. He's put a lot of spices over the breast and it should be quite flavoursome and aromatic. With this, he's got cabbage, a liver with the crust on it. If it works, I'd be absolutely amazed. If it doesn't, it could be a mishmash of a lot of different types of flavours on one plate. You've only got 15 minutes left. I'm working at the moment in Dorset, and I'm currently head chef at a uh, high-end gastro pub. I think I've got a good mind and a good taste for flavours. I grew up as a vegan until the age of 12, and my mum used lots of different unusual things in the kitchen, sort of Japanese products, that kind of thing. It's sort of effective on how light my dishes are today. Not so much cream, not so much eggs, but sort of focusing on the sort of natural flavours of the food. You all right, Jethro? Very good, thank you. Yeah. What are you making for us? I'm doing a pigeon dish. Um, cooking it a few different ways with some beetroot, wild garlic and yoghurt. Why master chef? I'm a competitive person. I've been cooking now for 13 years, so I thought it was time to, I don't know, come and showcase my skills and sort of see how far I can get. How competitive are you? I've got an identical twin brother and we always used to compete at everything, even though it came to eating dinner to running up the road. I wish you luck with this. I love pigeon. Love pigeon. Thank you. Jethro's using pigeon in, in three different components. He's, he's making a mousse. He's cooking the breast. 
as well as, as the leg to do a scotch egg. My only worry is having to serve a cold mousse on, on, on a hot plate. And the other thing I don't have to get in the dish is the yoghurt. Everything about this dish is slightly autumnal and earthy and... Where's the yoghurt coming into the equation? You've got ten minutes left. I think you better start plating. Help. I panic. Final touches, and I mean it. Giddy <laughs> aunt. Jethro, could you bring your plate up here, please? Hmm. Head chef Jethro has served pigeon breast with pickled beetroot, yogurt and a scotch egg made with a leg meat. But he didn't have time to plate his pigeon boudin or wild garlic. It looks an incomplete plate. It, it would be great to see the rest of it on there. I think the, the beetroot puree is very good. I like that the pigeon is still quite pink there, but I think possibly a bit under. The beetroot that's pickled is really sharp, really strong, and it just obliterates anything that's in my mouth. The yoghurt, it sort of works. The puree's OK. You, you know, you could have the makings of a really good dish, because what you've left out there, back there on your board, probably are some of the best bits here. And that is such a shame. Yeah. I think you understand flavour and texture. I don't think you quite know yet how to tell the time. OK. A little bit deflated. I didn't get to complete my dish as, as it should have been. So, yeah, overall, it could have been better. Sous chef Daniel's take on lemon meringue pie consists of shortbread biscuit pieces with lemon gel, lemon thyme mascarpone, lemon meringue, and edible flowers. Where is the meringue? Meringue has shrunk. It's not quite held itself. Well, you got a sweet tooth, Greg. I suppose you're going to... Well, you've already gone first. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. I'm really disappointed about the meringue, to be really honest with you, because that dish needs it. But the dish does have quite a nice freshness about it, but I think that's the, the lemon that's going through, the, 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 the sweet and the sour. It's a nice balance. The biscuit is OK, but I expect a shortbread in my mouth to just dissolve, just disintegrate. Yep. Daniel, what I do like is, is the strong lemon flavour that you've achieved from getting all that lemon in, in the pan to make your gel with your shortbread, they're slightly over. You could clearly see there's some dark ones on this plate. And, and if in doubt, the old rule, leave it out, yeah? Look, it tastes good. It's creamy and there's a little hint of thyme. But when you present a dessert like that, I'm expecting the wow factor. And you haven't got one. That's the problem. To be doing pastry for so many years and then mess up a meringue, devastated. Brasserie chef Joggy has made honey-glazed aromatic duck breast with cabbage, carrot puree, liver topped with spiced breadcrumbs, pickled shiitake, and a duck jus. Did you plan on, on dressing your plate like this? Um, I just um, ran out of time.
You can cook. Thank you. You can. That tastes good. Thank you. I love the flavours. I quite like the little liver underneath. That's really quite a nice idea. It's not overpowering in spices. The duck's lovely and tender. The sauce is rich and got great flavour. Good job. Well done. Thank you very much. Chef. Well done. Thank you. It's, it's a great surprise on the palate here, what I'm, what I'm tasting from you. The cabbage and, and what you've got in there, it's not too strong, so it doesn't overpower the duck. The liver, still nice and pink, is how I would have it. It's really disappointing that you have so much flavours on this and, and your presentation lets it down. Yeah. So you can cook. Let's make sure we get everything together, yeah? Absolutely. Joggy, thank you very much. Marcus Fearing saying I can cook. Uh, I think that's the biggest compliment I ever got in my career and I will remember it for a very long time. Dorset chef Samantha has served lamb cannon with pea puree. Fresh peas, wilted cos and gremolata. But she hasn't plated her goat's curd and dressing. First mouthful of puree. It's bland and watery. It should be smooth. Why does it taste of water? Possibly because there's hardly any seasoning in there. The lettuce, again, nothing in there. When we season and we taste, it's because we care, it's because we love what we're doing. No matter how nervous you are, darling, yeah? Yep. I really like your lamb with the gremolata. However, I find the veg, the puree, and its appearance, disappointing. Just think about this. Lamb, peas, lettuce, curd. It, <laughs> it just sings out, eat me. Great dish. It's a shame, Samantha, it really is. Thank you. Thanks very much. Ooh, 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 ooh. I don't think it's a true reflection of what I'm capable of at all and I'm really, really gutted because I think it made me look like a bit of an amateur today and I know I'm more capable than that by far, but I let myself down. Last up is 21-year-old Zach, who has roasted sea bream and served it with seaweed polenta. Yuzu-infused Chinese cabbage, machu green tea butter sauce, and crispy fish skin. You're gutsy, I'll give you that. Maybe that's just your age. <laughs> Blindfolds on, in we go, I reckon. Tally ho. Tally ho. That is a really nice sauce. It's got really good flavour. It's got depth, which I like. Thank you. Really good. The fish, curled up, wrapped up like that, a little dry. I felt that the skin has a much better flavour. As you can see, I've eaten all of it. The polenta doesn't work for me. Okay. It doesn't have a pleasant flavour okay. in the mouth. It needs some work yep. and some thought. Yes. OK? I watched you take a humble Chinese cabbage, you put it into a bag, you vac-packed it, you brought it out, you stuck it into a water bath, and at the end of it, it tasted like a cabbage. So what was the point? You know, I think young chefs these days, they try to run before they can walk. Yeah. OK, so take your time and everything will happen for you. you know, don't, don't rush it. Yeah. I think they see promise. Um, they have seen some basic errors, so I do need to pull my socks up and, you know, knuckle down. I tell you what, I enjoyed that. I thought that was really good. Yeah, it was a good start. Joggy had presentation issues, but we all enjoyed his flavour. Let's be fair, he could have done a lot better in areas, but if you put it all together, it tasted... It tasted good. Well, we've had other plates here that looked better, yet flavour-wise mm. did not deliver. Jethro was probably the cleanest of plates. There was precision there. Yes, he left half the dish on the board, but I like his fight. He's got some fighting spirits. That's important, and I think he can cook. You know, I saw him make the ballantine, which didn't make it on the dish, and the way he prepared the pigeon, 
Yeah, there's, there's skills in there. I enjoyed Daniel's dessert. But there was things wrong. The meringue was just disintegrated by the time it got to us. I would have preferred the shortbread a little bit shorter. There's a lot of positives to impart all that lemon flavour. It was very clever. Presentation was almost there. What about Samantha? Samantha Ooh. was crumbling under the pressure. Wow. But I did like the way she cooked her lamb. The concept of the dish, the ingredients that were sitting on her table, mm. looked stunning. And they did. They looked great. It just didn't come together. You know, it's such a shame. Zach, with, with his um, Japanese take on cooking, has sort of thrown us a bit. Let's be fair, he did complete the dish. He did have a good sauce. The question is, does Zach have enough depth to be able to cope with the pressure that we're all going to put him under? Thank you for your dishes today. We're looking ahead as to who can move forward, who can cook, who can take the pressure. The person leaving us is... Samantha. I'm gutted, I'm gutted that I'm out. But I had a very strong feeling it was going to happen when Greg called time. At that stage, then it was like, oh, I don't want to put this plate in front of them. The nerves might change. The tests will get tougher. And what's coming next is going to test you. Now the skills test. What are you going to get the remaining four to do? Today I'd like them to make us a tortellini dish using the ingredients here to make a filling and a sauce. They have 20 minutes to do this. The first thing I'm going to do is make my filling. So here we have a lovely selection of wild mushrooms. All right, I'm just going to quickly wash some of these. If they don't clean those, they could be gritty. I thought you were going to make the pasta first. No, I can't make the pasta first because the filling needs to be cold when you fill it. Let that cook out. Right, so I'm just going to roll the pasta out a little bit so it can fit into the machine. All our chefs should be able to work with pasta. I agree, completely. How do you know when you've got it absolutely right? You need to get it down as thin as possible. I don't like to eat thick pasta. So a little bit of water helps it to stick down. So fold it up. Ah. You make a little pasta pocket handkerchief, and then you twist it round on itself. Now cook them off a minute or two, nothing more than that. I'm just going to quickly knock out a sauce. This test is all about the ability to make good pasta and to match flavours. Beautiful, Monica. There we have it, Greg. Tortellini filled with wild mushrooms, a cream sauce with chorizo, and some wilted spinach and pine nuts. Pasta's perfect. Beautiful flavours. Well done. If our chefs can do something like this, I'll be very happy indeed. Let's get them in, Greg, and find out. Sous chef Daniel slipped up with the meringues on his dessert but one praise for his intense flavours. I know I can do better than I did in the first round, so, you know, I've got to go out there and prove myself. I'm, I'm not ready to, to back down yet. Daniel, a nice little bowl of tortellini. Over to you, chef. Thank you.
Daniel? Yes. Have you made tortellini before? Well, I have made tortellini before, yeah. Phew. <laughs> what makes a great tortellini? Nice thin pasta, uh, not overcooked, uh, well seasoned, good flavour. You've had seven minutes. Yay! All done? All done. Whoa. Crikey! Bit of grip. Lucky for you, my best friend is a dentist. Wash wild mushrooms, wipe them down before you cook with them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pasta, you looked very comfortable, very obvious that you've made it before. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I think I would have liked more of that lovely oil that you took time to, to make. You know, a bit more of a drizzle on there would have looked lovely. I tell you what, I am impressed by the way you made and the look of your tortellini. I think you can say, decent job. Thank you very much, mate. Off you go. Thank you. Step in the right direction. I was nervous before I went in, but as soon as I saw the pasta machine, I was happy, very happy. Head chef Jethro didn't manage to get everything on his last dish. Monica's skill test is, um, is, is, is scary. I'm fairly confident in, in my skills, but um, she can chuck anything out there and I'll, I'll just do as best as I can. Jethro, make us some tortellini and you can fill it and serve it with whatever is on this bench. I'm going to do a little um, duck cell with these wild mushrooms. Uh, with the chorizo, that's going to be the filling. Um, then I'm going to do a little bit of um, spinach pesto. Aye, aye. It's all go. You are going to have a go at making tortellini at some stage, aren't you? Absolutely. Yeah. Jeff, you've got five minutes left. Yeah. In the nick of time's all right. Overtime's not. Come on, Jethro. You've got three minutes. How long's the pasta going to take to cook? <clears throat> Two minutes. Good answer. Of nerves of steel. Not on the inside. <laughs> hey! Stop! Whoa, you're going to be the death of me. As a chef, I like a lot of what you've done here. I like the fact you took the time to wash your mushroom. You, you seem very comfortable working with the pasta, so I can see it's something you've done before. Yep. Some, some great skills on show here. Pasta is lovely. This gives you something to chew on there, made with a lot of care. But all I'm tasting is chorizo and truffle. It's not unpleasant, but I kind of would have liked the flavour of wild mushroom. <laughs> Somewhere. Cheers, mate. Thank Off you, you go. Goodbye. That felt like a bounce back to me, for sure. It hasn't bounced quite as hard as I was hoping, but it's, it's certainly much better. And um, yeah, bring on the next round. Brasserie chef Joggy 
stood out with his spice duck, although his presentation was scruffy. To be cooking for 15 years, I think I have cooked with everything. So I'm very much confident anything comes up, I'm ready for the challenge. Joggy, 20 minutes, bowl of tortellini. Off you go, chef. Lost, uh, confused myself. Are you trying to remember the shape of the tortellini? That's right, yeah. It needs a filling, which you then need to turn over. Okay. Something like that. Yeah, cool. You've got 12 minutes left, mate. All done? All done. You've got about seven or eight minutes left. But uh, if you're finished, you're finished. Are you happy with this? No, I'm not. So you couldn't remember how to make a tortellini, but it seems you couldn't remember how to use the pasta machine or give me a good hand-cut pappardelle. Making pasta is a fundamental skill of any chef. I don't even think there's a lot of point tasting it, to be honest. And then no one's going to want to eat pasta that thick. Nobody. Off you go, mate. Thank you. I thought that went very well. Obviously, I'm not happy with myself. I'm kicking myself very hard now. Uh, but I know I'm better than this, and I will prove judges in the next round. Finally, it's 21-year-old Zach. The ambition of his last dish overreached his skill level. The skills test does make me feel a little bit nervous, but it just gives me that drive to go at it and, you know, just do my best. Down to you, young man. Thank you. Tortellini, 20 minutes, off you go. You'll get there eventually. It's coming, Zach. You've got 20 minutes, mate. There we go. Do you know what it is you're going to make? I'm going to make a vegetarian tortellini with um, shallots, pine nuts and spinach. You're making it like you make ravioli? Yeah. Move it. You can yeah. do this. You've got five minutes, which is enough time to fill those tortellini and get them cooked. Got him up. Well done. Zach, um, watching you roll the pasta, you did sort of struggle with it. Eventually, you got the pasta going, but it was still too thick and, and it was way too much filling from the beginning. The pasta's slightly too thick, but spinach, pine nuts, and a little bit of truffle is, is delightful. But the chefs have got a question mark over your skills. And I have now as well. Thank you very much. Off you go. Thank you. You and Marcus were absolutely right about his level of experience. 
I would have liked to have been proven wrong. Didn't go as well as planned. You know, I just made too many schoolboy errors. Yeah, I think I'm going to go away and make a lot of pasta now. <laughs> This was a good skills test. You've got a really good look at these guys. I mean, Marcus gets them next, and then you two have got to make a decision. But it seems to me that Jethro and Daniel are going in the right direction. Joggy and Zach have got a lot to prove. Marcus Waring was one of the youngest chefs in the country to win a Michelin star. The second came soon after. To get a mission in Star when you're 25 is just insane. That takes some serious hard work um, and a, a lot of dedication. You have to be the best to achieve what Marcus has achieved. You have to stick with it. You have to be persevering, hardworking. And uh, Marcus is all those things, as well as passionate. Some of his most acclaimed food has been inspired by his upbringing. This dish comes from when I was at school, and the very first dish I ever cooked at school was a pineapple upside down cake. There weren't many boys in home economics at all. There was two of us out of 12. And I used to have to go to school with a basket, and it wasn't very cool, and it didn't look very good. But when I came home, I had something to eat, and I was the most popular person on the way home. But probably one of the most successful things, and the thing I was proud of the most, was my pineapple upside down cake. And this is sort of my nod to that. There are four elements to Marcus's Michelin-starred version of the dish, starting with perfectly identical tiny meringues. There we go. Enjoy that. A little bit of desiccated coconut on top of each one. OK, off to the oven, 100 degrees, 20 minutes, no colour. The second element is a coconut curd with a base of sugar, coconut milk and eggs. As I'm whisking, I can feel it coming together. I can feel the thickness. You can see the ribbons are holding a little bit longer. OK, that then gets transferred into a blender. Cold butter, and drop inside. It's lovely and smooth, as you can see. Next, is a pan padu, or eggy bread. It's made with thick slices of brioche soaked in eggs, milk, sugar, vanilla, and rum, and then fried in butter. The aroma is amazing. You can really smell the vanilla. And I think one of the other smells that's coming through is the rum as well. It's delicious. It is very indulgent. It's, it's butter, it's eggs, it's alcohol, it's sugar and vanilla, it's, it's steaky bread, but it actually is very rich and big, big flavour. Very happy with that. And now we can start to bring the dish together. Finally, the star ingredient, the pineapple, which has been cooked sous vide with sugar, coconut, rum and vanilla. You know, while I was dressing that, I was thinking of my pineapple upside down cake because that was a beautiful dish when it was dressed. I was a young kid at school, pineapples and sponge. That's my take on it now. Marcus's homage to his childhood is vanilla and rum infused pineapple with eggy bread, coconut curd and coconut topped meringues. It's finished with coconut sorbet and basil. I'm really inspired by these ingredients and I can't wait to see what the chefs come up with. You've got this amazing pineapple in front of you. I'm looking for a really interesting dish from you guys. We have some fantastic ingredients behind us. Coconut, mango, vanilla, mint, lemons, bread. You've even got some chilli. Wow. 
This is going to challenge you. One hour to cook, ten minutes to choose your ingredients. Up you come. Yeah, I'm a little bit confused at the moment, but um, I can see something coming together. I think pineapple works really well with spices. You've got a lot of possibilities. You can cook in sous vide, you can salt roast it. Quite happy with the, with the challenge it's given, really, to be honest with you. Yeah, pastry based, so very happy. Your last opportunity to showcase your talent. At the end of this, Monica and Chef will get together and decide which of you is going home and which of you is staying. One hour, off you go. This is all about what they're going to add to the pineapple. It's such a perfect ingredient. But we're going to need some creative thinking. And we're going to need some skill. You've got mangoes here, you've got pawpaw, you've got lime. If those chefs are good, they could bring the tropics into this kitchen. This could just come alive. I think I am creative under pressure, but I think after the first round, that really gave me a knock. No, I wasn't expecting that at all. So I think coming back today, it's going to give me a good push. OK, Daniel. Yes, thank you, Chef. You're trained in pastry, so you should be... Quite happy with today. Right in your comfort zone with this one. Yeah, I think so. I'm going to do a take on a pineapple tatan, but with short pastry instead of puff. Some nice, lightly spiced chilli, a little bit of lime to bring the citrus, and mint just to round it all off. Classically, a tatatan is not made with a short pastry. Mm. Classically. The, the point of a tatatan is that crispy puff pastry with that butter in there yep. helps that caramel come to life with all the sugar and the butter and... Yep. I'm dribbling. But... Will you pack it in? I'm dribbling. <laughs> but short pastry is short. How are you going to counteract that? Uh, I've got the syrup to go on there to hopefully balance and not make it uh, too dry in the palate. I'm quite good at making tatans, I'd like to think. Uh, so I think I've got a, a good enough understanding. Listen, we will let you crack on. Thank you very much. Cheers. A pineapple tatatan is a wonderful thing. I'm concerned that he's doing it with short pastry. And when I saw the look on your face, I got even more concerned. The thing is, he's making short pastry because he can't make puff pastry in an hour. It's impossible. The question is, does short pastry work as a tatatan? Uh, I'm not too sure. My nerves have been all over the place. Absolutely all over the place. I've never experienced it, sort of almost completely forget everything that you know, but um, I'm feeling a lot more confident now than I, than I did at the beginning. Jethro, what did you think when you saw the pineapple on your bench? I love pineapple. Pastry is not my strongest point, but um, I've worked around that. I've gone, sort of, gone sort of traditional, but with the tropical elements going into it. I'm doing a sort of spice pineapple bread pudding with some caramelised pineapple, um, a bit of sharpness with a bit of mango, mint, lime salsa, and a bit of honey cream just to smooth it off. On the first test, your signature dish, you ran out of time. Yes. Second test, the skills test, you were just in the nick of time. How about right now? I'll be ready with a few minutes to spare, I hope. Oh. Fingers, fingers crossed. I will believe that, Chef, when I see it. Jethro, he's comfortable, he's relaxed, he's got his dessert in the oven, his pineapple's nicely caramelised on the side. The question is, has Jethro brought the tropics into the bread and butter pudding? Is the balance going to be right? You've had 30 minutes. You're halfway. Joggy. Yes. How are you doing? Very well. Tell me about the dish. What are you calling it? Uh, I'm calling it a pineapple steak. Sorry? Yeah. Steak? Uh, steak. I mean, the big chunk of pineapple, basically. We're going to serve it with papaya salsa with some chilli and, and more tropical flavours in it. Just Desserts is not my strongest point in my professional career. However... Don't uh, tell me that. I was going to say... Don't tell me that. I'm joking. OK. Uh, however, I've grown up with all these ingredients, yes. I'm definitely sure I can pull out something very special today. Best of luck, mate. Thank you. 
jogging. Sweet pineapple put into sweet stock, a bit of spice, and then cooked in sugar. I know you've got a sweet tooth, Greg, but I think that one's going to be a little bit too far. I think Joggy's got some lovely ideas. I haven't yet seen him present a pretty dish. He's got such lovely colours. He's got the ability to make a beautiful looking plate. I just keep my fingers crossed for him. The only person can save me, it's me now. Uh, I have to cook my best, I have to deliver the best. I think it's, it's me who can save myself. Come on, I want me pineapple. Yeah, I'd say Marcus is intrigued about what I've presented so far. I think that he's concerned about what I haven't shown. But I've got youth on my side, I'm willing to learn, I've got the motivation to, to progress. I'm going to do pineapple that's been infused in sous vide with um, vanilla, cardamom, cinnamon, a little bit of olive oil and salt. And I'm going to do a spiced caramel, shortbread and coconut jelly. Do you feel that you have a point to prove now? I do have a point to prove. I think I've missed out a lot of basic techniques in the last two challenges and I need to prove to you today that I can produce food that follows basic techniques as well as looking good. So you're feeling good? I'm feeling good. Well, that makes me feel good. Good, I'm glad. Make you feel good? <sighs> Relieved. A bit happier. I don't know about good. Happy's a good start. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, you keep your head down. Thanks, Thanks Chef. Good luck. Zach's making a shortbread. That's a basic technique, and it'd be very interesting to see whether Zach can pull off a very simple basic biscuit. I will be impressed if he gets good flavour in that pineapple and he's got a good sauce. I've got my doubts, but I will be impressed if he can do it. You've got five minutes. Sixty seconds. That's all you've got. That's it. Stop. First up is Jethro, who has created pineapple bread and butter pudding, caramelized pineapple, passion fruit jelly cubes, pineapple gel, and a mango, lime, and mint salsa. You do have elements of, of, of tasteness. The fresh pineapple, wow. You know, it, it just speaks for itself. And, and this little salad on top with the mint going through it, that sort of brings a freshness to the dish. That's a Z. Yeah. But the, the bread and butter pudding feels slightly disjointed. That would have been nice with some coconut custard around the outside, something that goes with this dish. That's how I see it. I feel like you've got two dishes here. Mm. One is the tropical chunks, and the other one is the steaming hot bread pudding. And they are, they are two very different dishes. It's like the Bahamas and Britain. You know, <laughs> doesn't sort of go together. I had some interesting feedback from the judges, good and bad. Um, I probably just tried to mix up the two sort of combinations of sort of classical with tropical, and um, it didn't really work very well. And yeah, so it could have been worse. Joggy has cooked a pineapple steak and served it with papaya, chili and mint salsa, fresh pineapple, toasted coconut, peppered ricotta, and a honey and lemon dressing. This is supposed to be tropical, and you have dulled the colours. It's lost its vibrancy. The best bit about this dish, Joggy, is the syrup. The syrup is absolutely delicious. Mm. Really, really good. 
but the flavour I've got in my throat right now is, is chilli. It, it's a hot sensation. I want the memory of, of the pineapple and I've only got the memory of a chilli. And that's not what I want from a pudding. I, I like the syrup and I like the chilli flavour that I get and chilli and mint and the pawpaw I really like. I don't like um, the amount of lime on there. I particularly do not like pineapple and ricotta. Um, juice of pineapple going into that cheesy flavour, I, I, I don't like. For me, the, the flavours on it, yeah, it was a bit, a little bit overpowering with the chilli. Um, I'm not really, really excited about the dish, but it's a mixed feeling. Daniel has made a pineapple tartata with short crust pastry, which didn't cook properly, so he added shortbread biscuit pieces to the base and served it with caramelized pineapple, passion fruit, chili and lime syrup, and a honey ricotta. Not cooked, is it? No, the pastry's soggy and mm. very under. Yeah. We haven't got a tart to speak of. Um, we've got no pastry. I do, however, really like the caramelized pineapple with that sauce you've made of passion fruit and lime. You've got the makings of some nice flavour sensations here, but there's no body to this dish. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you added the extra biscuits. I like that. You, you know, you thought, you thought on your feet. You could see that it wasn't working because that's just saved that dish, along with the ricotta and the sauce. As soon as I walked in, saw pastry items, I was quite confident. Made a silly mistake, tried to do a tart to tan without puff pastry, but I think I came out for the other side doing all right. Finally, it's Zach, who marinated his pineapple with spices, olive oil and salt, and topped it with chili caramel, served with coconut jelly, shortbread, and a passion fruit coulis. Well, Zach, That is not a good dessert at all. The pineapple just tastes bland. The coconut jelly is not smooth. The texture is wrong. The sauce is really non-existent. I'm not getting chilli. I really like the flavour of your coconut jelly. I, I love that. I don't like the salt on the pineapple at all, and I don't like the texture of your, of your coconut jelly. OK. I feel like I could have done better. Yeah, I think I fell quite short of what I wanted to show him. Uh, there you go. I've got to be honest, Monica, there's errors all over the room today. Uh, this is a real tough one for me. It's almost heartbreaking, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It's such a shame. Pastry is Daniel's strength, and he made a pineapple tartar -ta. And I thought, okay, it's interesting. Tell me about the pastry. Well, I'm going to make a short pastry, which doesn't work. But the bit I do like, he served a really nice sauce, a really nice flavour to it. it. That was a lovely, lovely touch. He was very comfortable with pasta. I think he got maybe too confident in his skills that he then, in his haste, did not wash the wild mushrooms. Oh, no. Yes. Such a basic error. It is. It is a bit of concern that I've gone in there saying that pastry is my passion and that I haven't nailed both desserts, but hopefully it should get me through to the next round and hopefully I'll be able to do one final dessert for him, which will really knock him out. Then we have Jethro. He was very clever. He was told to make a portion of a tortellini and he made one large one. <laughs> hmm. But he made the filling of mushrooms and chorizo and all he could taste was salty chorizo in there. I don't think today was his best dish because I just think that he didn't think it out too well. But I think he has potential. It's really hard to sort of guess how the outcome's going to be with both of them. Um, I hope it's enough to get me through. Then we have young Zach, who had never made a tortellini, and his work process, trying to, to fit the whole pasta dough inside the machine, you know, instead of cutting it down. For me, it immediately puts up warning signs. Zach is struggling. Really, really struggling. I think they're both in agreement that maybe I do lack the basic skills. I've missed out a bit, really. 
you know, I need to go back, I need to work on those. And that leaves us with Joggy. He couldn't remember how to make any kind of pasta. He attempted to make Baba Deli. But I kid you not, it was possibly that thick. Wow. Yeah. His working methods, his ideas are crazy. His, the way he works, you just think, no. But he pulls off little bits of, hmm, you could have potential. I know deep down inside me, I'm a really, very good cook, but if I go home today, I know I went out on my weaknesses. I didn't vent out on my strengths. There is talent in this kitchen, Monica. We know there is. We know we can push these guys a little bit further. You know, I want them to succeed, but there's only so much help that you can give them. We can only take the best chefs forward. Chefs, today it has been a really difficult day. We've made a decision. Two of you are staying and two of you are going to be leaving the competition. The first chef that is leaving us is... Zach. Thank you very much. The second chef that is leaving us is... Joggy. I'm very disappointed at the moment, um, but it's nothing I can do it now. It's the end of my time here, but I'm going to go away, I'm going to learn, I'm going to improve. You know, it's given me the motivation I need. Massive relief. It's been crazy and this, this has just been an amazing thing to get, get to this far and um, get to the quarterfinals. It's static. I'm so, I'm so happy I wasn't ready to go home. I've got so much more potential to show them. I just need to real focus and, and knuckle down. Next time, it's the quarterfinal. And the chefs must prove themselves to Marcus and Monica. I like it. I admire your courage. It tastes great. Only the best of them will get to cook for the critics. He's a really good cook. Horrid. This is one of the very best things we've ever eaten on MasterChef. Chef.